Welcome to FOSS North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors. Our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. Hello, <clears throat> my name is Andreas Nilsson. I work as a UX designer at Red Hat. And today I want to talk about something called usability testing, a short introduction. So I often get asked, what is the number one thing I can do to make my open source projects uh, better design? Um, and a key in, in my mind is usability testing. So yeah, now I'm going to give uh, this talk for 10 minutes and uh, talk about how you can start doing these tests in your open source projects. So usability testing, at its core, it's simply a test of your software where someone who hasn't used your software before sits down and tests it um, while you take notes and while the rest of your software development team observes. But let's take a step back first and talk about design and what is that? And for me, design is the rendering of intent. Um, and you know, um, and a good design is to 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 uh, uh, communicate that uh, intent well. And in order to do that, you have to give people the tools that allows them to make uh, good decisions and and use your your software with with enjoyment and ease and as little frustration as possible. And I would say that everybody designs. Um, it could be the um, simple things in, in your software. It could be, you know, it's everything. It's the order you design, it's you display things in. It's every single little color choice, every individual word in your software. Um, it could be things like how much time does it take to load a screen and what do you communicate during that loading time? Um, or it could even be other things. Maybe you design a, you build an API. Like how how do people use that? What kind of wording do you use in that API? Is it internal in your system? So in my mind, everyone on a software development team needs to get better at the side. And a really quick way to get better quickly, better, better fast, is to get to know your users. And one of the best methods of doing that is with usability testing. I will let my cat out here. So. Um, so, um, the three foundations of usability testing are the who, the when, and the how. And in a test, we have three distinct roles. We have the moderator, we, uh, we have the participant, and the moderator gives out tasks, stays silent most of the time, and helps out only if needed. The participant is the person that tests the software, um, and do so while thinking out loud. And, Again, it's testing the software. It's not testing the people. It's testing the software. And then the team is there to uh, observe only, but it's critical that they are there. Um, because again, everybody decides. Everyone on the team takes the small decision that ends up being the software. Um, so who are we going to test with? Uh, again, we're testing the software. We're not testing anyone's particular skills about using software. Um, and everyone needs to be reminded about that. Part, in particular, the participants, you need to tell them, we are testing the software, we are not testing you, because people are very self-aware um, about their skills, and, and you know they don't want to public and make a fool out of themselves. So in order to do that, we need to recruit participants. And these could be you know, future users of your software, you know, the, the people that as closely matches um, the target audience. Um, to the software as possible. So <clears throat> ideally, you want people who haven't used your software before, who doesn't come in with predetermined notion. And it's usually OK to start with only a handful of people. We usually test with five, six people. 
Um, and you can run these tests, you know, as with as many people as you want, but as soon as you start seeing repetitive that, you know, like people keep running into the same issues over and over again, it's time to make a change. It's time to change your software a little bit and then test with, with new people after that. Um, and you need to be smart with who you test with. So for example, uh, my, my project that I spent most of the time working on, the Cockpit Perfect, the interactive web console for Reddit, Enterprise Linux, and other uh, Linuxes, uh, our core audience is system administrators. So we want to test with those. And we, we do want to test with a subset of those administrators. So for example, we want to test with, with new sysadmins or sysadmins that are maybe senior sysadmins, but they're new to Linux. So if we can get hold of those, that's the very best. Well, we could also test with developers. Um, um, we would get not as good results, but we would still get some answers. If we would test with Postman, we would be get, you know, kind of a results. We would get some stuff out of it, but you know, we wouldn't get uh, as good results as possible. With cats, we would get terrible results because you can't make them sit still or interact with a computer. But it's one group that is worse than cats, and that is your coworkers. Because your coworkers have the same disadvantages as you do, which is that they know too much about the back end. So just like you, they can fill in the blanks way too often. Um, and they also know the particular jargon of, of the language and the particular quirks. So you do not want to test with those. You want to like find out new things. Um, so that's why you need to keep in, in, in mind who, who you test with. Um, so then when you test. So you test it as early as you can because that's when it's least expensive. That's when it's as, with as little risk as possible. Uh, if it's only an idea, it's way too early. If it's already in production, it's way too late. But anywhere in between, uh, you can test, test these things. And um, you can get different things out of, of the test, uh, uh, depending on when you run it. For example, when you only have a wireframe, you can't test that interactive ability. But you also haven't put too much effort into it so far. So it's, you're, you're quick to change. Um, and when you have a Git branch, you can start testing things like loading times. Um, you know, when when do people look at the, at a screen and say, "Oh, I think it crashed." <laughs> um, and then the we come to the how. How do you test test it? If it's something like a web surfer, it's easy um, because with open source projects that are usually like remote, you have distributed teams. Uh, you can actually just do a video call. You can ask the participant to share your, their screen. And remember, it's the participant that does the talking. But how do you how do you make sure that they get the right software? If it's something like uh, web-based software, and, has, and, and the stuff I work on, it's a web-based thing. So I can just host it somewhere and then give them a URL. Uh, ask them to share their screen and uh, get going. But if it's something like a client app, maybe it's a CLI tool, well, you can strip them a Docker container and ask them to run that. Or maybe it's a, a piece of Zexos software. You can uh, ask them to run a, um, a application container, such as a flat pack or something similar. So then we come to the actual test. Just like I do now, they share their screen um, and do the talking. And the moderator, the person that asks the questions, gives the task to carry out. Uh, would you do the talking and also has their video on? Same for the participants, but they also have their screen sharing. But then the team stays silent because it's very easy for the team to, to uh, break in, to, to um, uh, yeah, you, you know, they need to stay silent and only observe so far. And then at the very end, um, they have the opportunity to ask questions. So again, the moderator does the asking, can do helping if the participant is extremely stuck, then you know they just note it down and say, well, maybe you should try this one. So we can get move on, move on with the test and try the other things. The participant does most of the talking, speaking out loud, 
but they will not should not ask for any help. And if they do, the moderator should not help them. And then the team should mostly be listening and they should be talking. And then how many tests should you run? Well, you should only run a handful. Um, there's no magic number. You should run more and more tests. You should fix the issues that come up and you should run the test again. And you will learn more and more uh, about the stuff you're doing. Were you able, actually able to uh, find the stuff um, that was in there? Um, you know, keep, keep building new stuff, test them, build something new, test it again. And that's my 10 minutes. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so, Henrik. Yes, please. Uh, so, Andreas, hi. This is Hello. Henrik. So, a question from the audience. Are you using tools to do tests remotely, or do you do all in uh, all testing in person? Ah, uh, sorry, this was a bit, little bit unclear. So I only ever do all my testing remotely since I have a remote team, which is th the same setup that a lot of uh, open source projects have. So we always do a video meeting, and then we uh, have the all the people. Uh, dialing in all the all the, the the moderator dials in the participant dials in and the entire team uh, dials in for observation. So we always do it remotely, and uh, it's also good because then we can also record it if someone is unable to make that meeting, for example. Um, but it's definitely possible to do it in person as well. Um, then you just you know you set things up in a room. Um, you invite someone over and um, take notes uh, as you go, so to say.